Welcome to the Beer Frontier. My name's Gage. And I'm Robert. This is a program about beer. Not froth and bubbles, not corporate spin, just about beer. Today we'll be looking at a couple of amber ales and also a classic German imported beer. And I'll be taking you out to the Coldstream Brewer in the Yarra Valley to see what they do. And we'll get some home brewing tips from our Boffin Brewer, Ben. Uh, Enzo, Enzo our pet chef, he's going to show us cooking with beer. And you can learn more about our show, including downloading Enzo's recipe from our website, www.thebeerfrontier.com.au. First up, we're going to have a look at Stella Artois. This is about the truth, authenticity. When is a beer authentic? When is it true to its origins? Or when is it just another brand brewed by a globalized beverage company? Yeah, today in the keg room, we're going to be looking at Stella Artois. Now, Stella Artois is a Belgian beer that was first brewed in 1926, and it's still brewed in Belgium today. Uh, it's, but it's also brewed in the Ukraine, the UK, and here in Australia. Yesterday I went into a bottle shop and bought two six-packs of Stella, one brewed in Belgium, one brewed in Australia. Same shop, same price, same day. Yeah, but you really do have to look quite hard to tell the difference. I mean, luckily this one has got imported written all over it, which tells you it's the imported product. The non-imported product has got NO366 and in very little letters, Belgian tradition and Foster's written on it. So that's a bit of a giveaway. So what's happening here? Well, it's called parallel importing. The Belgian beer, brewed in Belgium, is exported to a second country, Malaysia, for example. And the official Malaysian distributor of Stella sells it to an Australian retailer. Now, before they do this, they have to open every box and stick the Australian compliance sticker on every single bottle, which is a pretty time consuming. After they've done that, they re-export the beer to Australia. So leaving aside any comments on carbon footprints, and we'll talk about that another day, Roberts, um, they're selling um, a beer in Australia for the same price as the locally brewed product. And it makes me wonder how much Foster's is making on the locally brewed product, to be honest. Yes, well, in Europe, you know, pil um Stella Artois is positioned as a mainstream sort of lager, the sort of lager you'd buy in a pub or at a railway station. And uh, just having a look at it here, it's it's got a nice colour to it, it's got a nice head, it's got a very pleasant aroma, and it's slightly sweet, quite a bit of hoppy, malty sort of taste to it. Very, very nice mainstream sort of lager, I reckon. That's a three-star beer for me. Yeah, um, well, as Robert said, it's a dry, hoppy-style, Pilsner-style lager. Um, what's good about this beer, though, is this is where local imitators sometimes fall down, is it's got some body, it's got some palate weight on the mid-palate. So the malt and hops are in, in harmony, got the palate weight, and it's got a nice crisp clean finish. Yeah, I'd, not my favourite style, but I'd give that beer three out of five too. Yeah, well I'm, I'm looking at the um, the local product now and straight away I can see that it's got a slightly lighter colour. In fact, it's hardly got any colour at all. It's The head is nowhere near as creamy. It hasn't got anything like the, the aroma of the previous one. And um, taste-wise, you know, if I had a blindfold on and I was tasting this, I, there was no way I would think this was Stella Artois. And it's really, it's got really quite an unpleasant aftertaste. In fact, for me, that's a, a pretty well a one-star beer. Well, I'm not quite as harsh as you. I'd go. That's that's not the worst beer I've had in my life, and actually, it's not the worst beer I've had today. But it's still very disappointing, and mm. I, I'd only rate that one and a half stars out of five for pleasure, for me. But I've, I've got to say. That beer has got nothing in common with this beer. Mm. These two beers have got nothing in common with each other except they've got a label that says Stella Artois on the label. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. You know, if you really like Stella, what you've got to do is you've got to read the fine print.
We're out here at Coldstream Brewery. Let's go and see what Alan the Brewer is doing. So, Alan, how does a chef become a brewer? Well, I started out at Coldstream helping out Scotty in the kitchen and um, being a bit of an obsessive compulsive home brewer I started working on Rod the brewer he was here at the time and uh, started with one day and then two days and then before I knew it I said hey Scotty I can't work in the kitchen anymore I need it out in the brewery so <laughs> it basically kicked off from there. What was the the beer that inspired you to to become uh, or really get into what was the inspirational beer? Well, funnily enough, it was um, James Squire's Amber Ale. So it was the first time I'd sort of got out of the pale lager kind of oh. mentality and tried something with a bit of, you know, a bit of malt, a bit of butterscotchy in it. And yeah, really enjoyed the challenges that came with that. And from there, just sort of opened the door to trying this, that, and basically, you know, you work your way through every imported beer ever made since then, so. Yeah, oh, good, that's good work and someone's got to do it. Good study, yeah. Yeah, good study. <laughs> hey, so tell us what's different about Coldstream Brewery? What do you do here which is different to the other micros? Um, there's a couple of things that we do differently. Not a, not a lot of micros, um, sterile filter there and carbonate and then bottle their beer under pressure. So that's one of our points of difference. So rather than re-fermenting in the bottle, which you can sort of bring back some undesirable fermentation sort of flavors, yeah. um, we get our beer fermented cold condition and then we put it through a series of filters, which leaves it with in a yeast-free environment and then bottled under pressure. So at the end, you've got a yeast-free bright beer that hasn't been pasteurized so you've still got a little bit of, you know, good love and life yep. in the beer, but no, nothing that's going to keep it kicking on. So it's not uh, cloudy, it's bright. No, it's, it's very bright, bright it's yeah. Very bright beer. So, yeah. yeah. It goes through a series of, there's bright and there's polished and there's sterile. So yep. you've got your three sort of grades. If running it through the first one, you've got your bright filtered beer. Second is what they call polish, so that's really, you know, you won't get any chill haze or anything like that. Yeah. And then thirdly, your sterile strips out any yeast or bacteria that could turn the beer in the bottle. All right. Thank you. So, so your kettle's fired by gas, not like electric. Um, how does that affect the uh, flavour of the beer? It can, it can have an effect with a, an electric element, depending on size of your beer and how much power is actually in the element, you can actually get some caramelisation happen on the, uh, on the element. So the steam will only get to you know, 102, 103 degrees tops, so you don't actually get any caramelisation or dextrinisation of, um, of the wort itself in the kettle. Oh, okay. So oh, good. yeah, if you're trying to brew a nice pale yep. lager, something like that, then you're not going to add any colour through the caramelisation. Okay, process. so it's really, it really can affect the colour and the flavour. Yeah. Yeah. Alan, can you uh, explain to the viewers um, how you can build different flavours in the bottle by using uh, different yeast strains? Yep. Um, to start with, you've got a couple of different types of yeast strains. So you've got your lager yeast and you've got your na an ale yeast. So your lager yeast is um, fermented at very cool temperatures and, you know, gives you a nice, crisp, dry sort of finish to your beer and usually has pretty mellow mellow flour flavours and then when you get into your ale yeast you're fermenting at a higher temperature and you get more of your fruity sort of flavours so depending on on style and type of beer you sort of have to work with those those avenues so if you've got a nice English ale you got it at a nice warm temperature and you get some of that fruit salad -y kind of action in there and then if you don't want so much of that fruit salad -y action then you probably just drop it down a couple of degrees and you'll clean out those flavours so you might just pick up a slight fruity ester rather than that big oh, and sure. then if you go into wheat yeasts then you can get bubblegummy clove all sorts of band-aids yeah, yeah yeah well band-aids <laughs> is, band is bad um but yeah you can sort of work on those profiles and then through that you've got your complexity of malts as well so you can mash high with a dark malt and end up with a you know a fruity fruity lager still yeah but then you can also mash low with a lighter 
you know, a lighter ale malt right. and use a lager yeast or an ale yeast at low temperatures and you'll end up with what's called a Kolsch style, which is still very clean. So it just, there's a lot, there's a few, basically your malts, your temperature and then your yeast sort of create that profile for you. Um, so, so Alan, what's on the horizon for you and uh, Coldstream Brewery? Well, we'll be uh, swinging into our spring lager pretty soon, which is a what we call like a, an Oktoberfest, a Mertzen style lager. So it's a nice mid, mid sort of depth colour, darkish lager, um, full of different kinds of caramel, Munich and uh, crystal malts. A real nice sweetie, but once it's fermented out, it has a really nice balance. It's moderately hop, so it's not too bitter, and it's a nice sort of transition out of the cold and onto those summer beers. So that's what we'll be working on. Thanks, Alan. Thanks for your time, and we're going to head back to the keg room. Lovely. Thanks, Gage. <laughs> My name is Ben and I'm a home brewer. I'm going to be with you guys throughout this series, giving you hints and tips on how to make really good beer, in my case in my own backyard, perhaps in your case in your own kitchen or garage. Today I'm going to be taking you through the basics of beer and what's in it. So we have four main key ingredients we're looking at in beer. We have water, we have malted barley, hops and yeast. Fairly simple. I'll go through each of them so that we understand how important they are. So water is in fact an extremely important part of brewing. Um, you can affect the way your beer tastes by what you add to the water and sometimes take away. So moving on to malt, this is of course a very important ingredient in your beer. This is essentially barley that has gone to a malt house and it has been steeped in water at a certain temperature and then kilned off to dry and we as a home brewer will take that process on to continue to make our beer. We're turning the starch in this into sugars for our beer. Hops of course, another essential ingredient in beer. Not all beers have it, but most do. Um, they impart bitterness to your beer and aroma and flavour and also help to preserve your beer as well. And so we move on to yeast. Of course, probably the most underrated ingredient in beer. Um, what is it? Well, it's billions of microorganisms that are going to turn my sugars into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Um, the choice of yeast that we use will dictate the particular beer style that we're going to be making. So very important that we choose the right style and take care of this little baby. So there it is, that's the four essential ingredients for making beer. You can of course add plenty of other adjuncts and sugars and fruits and all sorts of things if you want to, and we're going to look at those in the weeks to come. Next week I'm going to be taking you guys outside to my all grain setup, and I'm going to take you through the process of making an all grain beer from start to finish, and how we actually bring it all together to make that product that we all know and love. <laughs>